Hi, I'm Kenny Yeats. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is our regular weekly message. And guess what tomorrow is? That's right. It's February the 14th, my mom's birthday. But not only that, it is Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's Day to all you people out there. May the Lord bless you with the love of your life. Whether you're looking for the love of your life or whether you're enjoying the love of your life. May the Lord bless you with the love of your life. And may it last the full lifetime. And since it's Valentine's Day weekend, I believe that the appropriate thing to read or the appropriate scripture to read is from the love chapter. So would you please turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and we're going to read 4, verse 4 through 8. You know, I want to answer the question, what is real love? In my message this morning, by the same title, what is love? real love. You know, when I was young, the rock band Foreigner had a big single. It, um, it was called, I Want to Know What Love Is. And Lou Graham belted out these, these lyrics. He said, I want to know what love is. I want you to show me. I want to feel what love is. I know you can show me. It was a really great song but apparently, Lou was very unfamiliar with love and its attributes. He was desperate for it. He even seemed to be diligently seeking it, but he didn't seem to know what it was. Another rock band, Nazareth, thought that they were familiar with love, and they described it this way. They said, love hurts, love scars, love wounds and marks. Any heart not tough or strong enough to take a lot of pain, take a lot of pain. Love is like a cloud, holds a lot of rain. Love hurts. Ooh, ooh, love hurts. Well, I have an answer for Forner, and I have some advice for Nazareth. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 8. Paul explains it so eloquently. He, he, he leaves no room for doubt at all about what real love is. So let us read it for ourselves. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Love never fails. Paul left no doubt as to what true love is or what real love is. This is the legal definition of love because it is beyond any reasonable doubt. After reading this, you know exactly what love is. Love is patient, meaning you don't get frustrated with those that you love, which begs the question, who should I love besides my family? Well, Jesus answers that in general terms and in specific terms when the Pharisees were questioning him about the great commandment, which is the greatest of all commandments, they asked Jesus. And he said in Mark chapter 12, verse 30 through 31, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. That covers everyone, yet still manages to place God at the top of the list, to place him first. It is difficult to love like, like 1 Corinthians chapter 13 if you don't first love God. Matter of fact, it is impossible to love like that. But someone will disagree with me. They'll say, 
What do you mean? I disagree with that. I love my wife. I love my children. Or I love my parents. I love my siblings. But this isn't that kind of love. We're talking about a different type of love here. I'm, I'm talking about the kind of love that Jesus described in, in Luke chapter 6, verse 32 through 36. He said, If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same thing. If you lend to those whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. But love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High, for He is good to the ungrateful and the evil. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. Oh, now, Brother Kenny, that is difficult. That is probably impossible. No one can love like that. Well, I have read stories that beg to differ. In his book, Tortured for Christ, Richard Warmbrand describes some hor horrific things that he suffered in the hands of of the communist. He tells this story and I want to quote it. He said, I have seen Christians in communist prison with 50 pounds of chains on their feet, tortured with red hot iron pokers in whose throats spoonful of salt had been forced, being kept afterwards without water, starving, whipped, suffering from cold and praying with fervor for the communist. This is humanly inexplicable. It is the love of Christ which was poured out in our hearts. End of quotes. Even after all of that, these Christians were pay, praying with fervor for the same ones who were torturing them, who were beating them, who were poking them with these red hot pokers. They chose to love, they chose to forgive, and they chose to pray for those same people. So don't tell the persecuted church that it is impossible to love like that. You keep by a little too late to tell them that it's impossible to love. They love. Even those who are killing them. They're loving those who are torturing them. It is only impossible if you're trying to love with a secular love. Or you're trying to love with self. It just won't work. That kind of love comes from our Heavenly Father. From Almighty God Himself who so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That is true love. That is, is the true love that we're talking about today. But not only is love patient, but love is kind. It does not return railing for railing. It does not return insult for insult. It does not return hurt for hurt. It does not do any of those things. Jesus is a perfect example of love and kindness. Jesus was beaten. He was spit upon. They slapped him in the face. They mocked him. They publicly humiliated the almighty God who came down to save them. They made him carry his own cross to Calvary to be crucified for crimes that he did not commit. They stretched out his arms and they nailed his hands to the cross. Then they stretched out his legs and nailed his feet to that same cross. Then they lifted him high and he hung between heaven and earth. And there our Savior died for our sins, for my sins, for your sins, for the sins of the world, for everyone who could come to him and ask for forgiveness. He will freely give because he paid the price, because he loved us so much. 
Jesus could have called 10,000 angels, but he refused to return Raylan for Raylan. He refused to, to, to come down off the cross, but he chose to stay there because he loved us. He chose to pay the debt that we could not pay. He chose. Why? Because he loved us. And some of his very last words, um, just before he died, were to the same ones who were killing him, who were crucifying him. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That, my friends, is love. That is real love. That is true love. That is kindness. When you can forgive like that, you have and overlook all that is being done to you, overlook the hurt that you are suffering, then you have learned what love is. Not only that, but love does not envy and it does not boast. I read a story uh, the other day about a crow and a peacock. It said that one day a crow saw a peacock dancing and the peacock was so beautiful and elegant and he seemed so happy and the crow envied him and wanted to be like him. So the crow came up with an idea. He would follow the peacock around and pick up all the feathers that fell out of the peacock as he danced. When he finally had enough, the grumpy crow stuck all the peacock's feather into his own feathers and went to find the peacock. He found him with the other peacocks dancing. So he went and he danced with them until the peacocks realized that the crow was not one of them and they all stopped dancing. They asked him, why do you act like a peacock? The crow answered, because you are so beautiful and happy. I want to be like you. The peacock answered, all of us have special, special qualities. You may not look or act like us, but you have gifts, like an intelligent brain, which we do not have. So be satisfied, crow. The grumpy crow went home and joined his own friends. And the wisest of them said, Son, I hear you have learned an important lesson. You may not look like a peacock, but you are special in your own way. And that's how it is with us. You see, the peacocks were not boasting. The crow was the one who was envying. But he learned the lesson that God has made us all special in our own way with different gifts so that we can build up the church. We can build up the body of Christ. We don't envy somebody or, or someone of their gifts. We do not envy them because of their possessions. You don't know what they went through or might have went through to get where they're at or to get what they have. Maybe they, it cost them a huge sacrifice. We do not envy like that, but we rejoice with them. Therefore, love encourages. Love does not envy. Love does not boast. Neither is love easily angered, and it keeps no record of wrongs. We do not think back. We do not um, um, make... Make our memories recall what happened to us yesterday, what happened to us years ago, and, and we keep playing that. This one is totally impossible without God. You see, God is the God of love, and when He comes into us and He makes His home in our heart, He fills us with His love. And then we're able to do the impossible. We're able to love even when we're hurt, even when we're being persecuted, we choose to love. You see, like when someone cuts us off in traffic, we're not screaming and showing them fingerly gestures. No, we, we, we let that go. Instead, what we should be doing is saying a quick prayer of safety for that offended party who just cut us off. And when someone hurts us and does us wrong, we don't store it up in our memory banks and keep replaying it like some scene out of a, out of a movie that we just watched. Like we, we, we make like Elsa 
and we let it go. Why? Because love is not easily angered. Love does not keep record of wrongs. This same Richard Warmbrand tells another story in his book, Tortured for Christ. And I want to quote. He wrote, When one Christian was sentenced to death, he was allowed to see his wife before being executed. His last words to his wife were, You must know that I die loving those who kill me. They don't know what they do, and my last request of you is to love them too. Don't have bitterness in your heart because they killed your beloved one. We will meet in heaven. These words impressed the officer of the secret police who attended the discussion between the two. He later told me the story in prison where he had been sent for becoming a Christian." End of quote. True love conquers even the most hardened of hearts. The officer of the secret police who attended the discussion was so convinced of the truth of the gospel because of the sincere love this man had for those who killed him. And he encouraged his wife to have that same love that even though they were killing her husband, her loved one, he, he, he wanted her to love the communists who, were, who, who, who took the life of her loved one. And because of that, this hardened communist officer gave his life to Jesus and he became a Christian and he ended up in the same prison that he once oversaw. Love does not hurt. Love does not wound. Love does not mar, but rather it always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. There are no limits to the power of love. Warren Barfield wrote this song. Love is not a place to come and go as we please. It's a house we enter in and then commit to never leave. So lock the door behind you. Throw away the key. We'll work it out together. Let it bring us to our knees. Love is a shelter in a raging storm. Love is peace in the middle of a war. If we try to leave, may God send angels to guard the door. No, love is not a fight, but it's something worth fighting for. Love is worth fighting for. Whether it's our Christian love or, or, or our marital love, it's worth fighting for. There's another song that Hillsong sings that says, you didn't want heaven without us, so Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? Jesus is the epitome of love. He chose to love even to his own hurt. He chose to protect even to his own demise. He chose to leave the splendor of heaven to come to this old dusty world to know what it was like to be hungry, to be thirsty, to be rejected, to be beaten, to be killed. All in the name of love. Remember the next time you feel offended or you feel the need to defend yourself. Remember that love is patient. Love is kind. Even in extreme difficulties, love is patient and love is kind. Even when the whole world is against you and the need to fight your own battles arises, love is patient and love is kind. Love is a choice. So this Valentine's Day, I encourage you, choose to love let your light so shine that others may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Make a special effort to love your spouse. 
Make a special effort to love your family. Make a special effort to love your friends. And last but certainly not least, make a special effort to love God because He first loved us. This is your priority. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your might, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all that is within you. Love the Lord your God because He first loved us and He died for us because He loved us. Jesus said that they would know us by our love. We are called to love. We are called to love unconditionally. But don't do it or don't try to do it on your own. We need to have the love of Jesus in our hearts first before we can love like that. So, the question is, do you have the love of Jesus in your heart? Would you like to have the love of Jesus in your heart? All you have to do is to ask, and Jesus will come into you, and he will sup with you, and you with him. So if you would like to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Help me to love like Jesus loved. Help me to love unconditionally, even to my own hurt. Help me to forgive and not keep record of wrongs. Not remember the wrongs that have been done to me, but to forgive and to love and to pray for those who persecute me. Pray for those who have hurt me. Pray for those who say all manner of evil against me and love them unconditionally. And most of all, Lord Jesus, help me to love you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What I need you to do for me is to get yourself a Bible, a Bible that you can understand. And read that Bible every single day. Highlight it. Highlight those love verses. Highlight the, the, those verses that are meaningful to you that will help you get through your day, help you to overcome, help you to love. Then find yourself a Bible-believing um, church. Not one of those progressive churches, but one of those Churches that believe in real love, the love of Jesus, the love of Jesus of the Bible and what he stood for, holiness, righteousness. And um, join that church, be discipled in that church. And when Jesus comes back, he'll find you doing what it is that you're supposed to be doing and he'll take you to be with him where you'll be with him forever and ever. There you'll enjoy real, true love love forever. Thank you so much for joining me. Happy Valentine's Day from my family to your family. My name is Kenny Yates. This is Hold the Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.